Hi, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, I am going to provide an introduction to Azure Event Hub and its capabilities. Azure Event Hubs is a high performance event ingestion service and a big data streaming platform. So for example, if you take a commercial building with multiple floors, each floor can have multiple sensors in order to read temperature data. Basically, those sensors will read temperature data at a particular frequency. So all these sensors installed across multiple floors on a monthly basis can produce millions of events. And if you want to have a cloud service in order to ingest those events, buffer and store them and process your stream of events in real time to get actionable insights, then Event Hub is the right choice for you. Okay. And in any kind of event based architecture, you have event producers. The event producers can be sensors, like I said earlier, and they can be other Azure services also. So for example, from sensors, you might send the events initially to IoT Event Hub. And within IoT Event Hub, you can configure message routing in such a way, certain type of events can be routed to certain event hubs. Okay. And also you can have stream analytics. Basically for stream analytics, event hub can be a source or event hub can be a destination. Regarding IoT Hub and Stream Analytics, I'm going to explain them in a bit more detail in the subsequent labs and lectures. Okay. And all these event producers can send events to Event Hub using HTTP and AMQP. Okay. Using those two protocols, event producers can ingest the data into Event Hub. And within Event Hub, you can have multiple partitions. Multiple partitions enable you to parallelly process the events by different applications. Okay, and also you can use partitions in order to segregate the data. So for example, you can configure in such a way all the temperature readings will be stored in one partition. All the vending machine sensor readings will be stored in partition 2. All the coffee machine sensor readings will be stored in partition 3. So that way also you can configure. And in the end, all these events need to be processed. Those processing applications generally called as event receivers. And for these event receivers, you can create different consumer groups within Event Hub. Each consumer group generally represents one application. You can have five concurrent reading applications within consumer group, but it is generally recommended to have only one application reading from the consumer group point of view. And each consumer group can access multiple partitions and read the events at a different frequency. Okay. I know you might getting confused. So let me take you through these key components of event hubs in bit more detail. First is event producers. Any entity that sends data to an event hub is event producer and also called as event publishers. Event publishers can publish the events using HTTPS or AMQP 1.0 or Apache Kafka 1.0 and above. Okay. And the second one is partitions. Each consumer only reads a specific subset or partition of the message stream. You can use a partition key to map the incoming event data into specific partitions for the purpose of data organization. So for example, you can ingest temperature data, vending machine sensor data, coffee machine sensor data into the same event hub, but with a different partition key. In that way, event hub will look into the partition key of the event and put that event into an appropriate partition. And the third thing is consumer groups. It is basically a view of entire event hub. Consumer groups enable consuming application to each have a separate view of the event stream. So in real world scenario, if you have a partition full of events, generally you will have two applications that are reading those events within that partition. One application typically reads the events and put them into a storage. So it doesn't do anything is just read the events and put into storage. Because the events in Event Hub will be expired in a certain period of time, you have one dedicated application generally read the events and put it into a data lake store or blob storage. And you have another application which generally reads the events and to identify some issues. So for example, let's say you have a temperature events partition which contains temperatures and you want to identify the events where the temperature is above 21 degrees. For that, you have a dedicated application to analyze the events and identify those events with greater than 21 degrees. So you have two applications, right? One to archive, one to analyze. Both of them can read the same partition, but with a different offset key. 
An offset is basically a position of the event within the partition. Because these events are not getting deleted automatically, because unlike queues in a service bus, where a particular message will become visible when one application is reading, here events will be visible for both applications. So both applications need to maintain its own cursor within that partition. So how many events I read and from what event I need to read further. Okay. So that is called offset. It's basically a cursor and this cursor value needs to be stored by each application. So they will know from where they need to start reading again. Okay. And the next thing is throughput units. It's pre-purchased units of capacity that control the throughput capacity of event hubs. And finally, event receivers. Any entity that reads the event data from an event hub is event receiver. All the event hubs consumers connect via AMQP 1.0 session. Okay. So these are all the key components of event hub. And the next thing is event hubs for Apache Kafka. Event Hub provides a Kafka endpoint that can be used by your existing Kafka based applications as an alternative to running your own Kafka cluster. Basically, Apache Kafka is a big data streaming platform which is initially developed by LinkedIn but donated to Apache. And in case if you want to migrate your Apache Kafka cluster into Azure and you are looking for the right option, you can use Event Hubs for it. Basically, the big advantage of using event hubs is you don't need to change any applications that are dependent on Kafka cluster other than simply changing the endpoints to point it to event hub. Because event hub has exactly similar concepts of Kafka, your applications don't see any difference. Okay. So if you are comparing Kafka concept with event hubs concept, in event hub you generally call it as namespace and in Kafka you call it as cluster. And within the namespace, you will configure multiple event hubs. Similarly, in Kafka within cluster, you will configure multiple topics. So basically topic in Kafka mean event hub in event hubs. And the next ones are partitions, which are same in terms of terminology. Consumer group are same and offset is also same. So in a sense, your applications that are depending upon Kafka cluster doesn't need to change anything apart from simply changing the endpoints. Okay. And the next thing is Event Hubs Capture. Event Hubs Capture enables you to automatically capture streaming data into Azure Blob Storage or Azure Data Lake Storage. You can specify your own Azure Blob Storage account and container or Azure Data Lake Store account, which are used to store captured data. So as I said earlier, in a real world scenario, a bit partition will be accessed by two applications in general. One application is to archive the data or move the event data into Azure Blob Storage or Azure Data Lake Store. And another application is to process the data or analyze the data to identify anomalies. Okay. So, so what Event Hub Capture do is instead of you developing an application and also configure a consumer group in order to read the events from the partition and archive them into Blob Storage or Data Lake Storage for further analysis. Instead of you doing all those stuff, Event Hub Capture will automatically do that for you. So you don't need to develop a new application to archive the data or move the data into blob storage or data like storage. And also you don't need to configure a consumer group for that purpose. Azure Event Hub will automatically do that for you. Okay. And captured data is written in Apache AVRO format. It's a compact fast binary format that provides rich data structures with inline schema. This format is widely used. It is used in Hadoop ecosystem, stream analytics, Azure data factory, etc. Okay. So basically using this capability, you can automatically move the streaming data into Azure blob storage or data lake storage. And finally, I would like to touch upon throughputs, i.e. in terms of procuring event hubs capacity in the form of throughput units. Throughput capacity of event hubs is controlled by throughput units. A single throughput unit includes in terms of ingress up to 1 MB per second or 1000 events per second, whichever comes first. And in terms of egress up to 2 MB per second or 4096 events per second. And when you are purchasing throughput units for an event hub namespace, that will be shared across all event hubs in that namespace. And finally, a single partition has to have minimum scale of one throughput unit. 
So basically, when you are estimating event hub's capacity, there are three things that you should keep in your mind. First one is in terms of size. So whether it is 1 MB or 2 MB per second. And the second thing is number of events, whether it is 1000 events or million events, you need to understand how many events produced per second. And the third thing is how many partitions you would like to go with. So three things in terms of size, number of events produced per second and number of partitions you would like to go with. Okay. You need to keep those three things in your mind when you are estimating event hub's capacity. So that's it for this lecture. In this lecture, I have taken you through event hub and its capability and also I've taken you through some of the key components of the same event hubs for Apache Kafka, event hubs capture and also I've taken you through finally event hubs capacity. Next lecture is a lab where I'm going to show you how to create event hub namespace, go through some of the key configuration settings and also create an event hub within that namespace and create some consumer groups within that event hub namespace. Okay. So if you have some time, join me in the next lab.